The Book of Recollections, Episode 18, Snake in the Grass, by Di Sylvania. Hello again, reader dear. Ready for another chapter on our favorite story? Well, at least it is mine. <laughs> in today's recollections, loyalties are tested, old flames reignited, and dragons take flight. Aren't you enticed? You are, of course you are, dear. Now let's dive right into the chaos. The suspense surrounding Kate's vision continued to build, but it wasn't revealed straight away. Shaklashak, now captured by the legend, found himself suspended between two buildings in the Midnight District. The legend communicated through scribbles, presenting a chilling proposition. Shaq had to demonstrate loyalty to Munin and Hugin by killing both Kaith and Yarek to receive immortality from Jormungandr. In the Ember Leaf's doorway stood a long, raven-haired individual, adorned with tattoos and feathers, cloaked shoulders, and, after centuries, boasting a new and impressive physique. Kaith recognized Yarek instantly, despite missing the beak and the rest of his bestial raven features she once knew. Blaze, holding Kate's hand, sought to understand her past and present, but, dismayed with her being distracted, left the half-elf to confront Yarek alone. The old friends headed to Lover's Park for a private conversation. Pax attempted to follow Kate and Yarek outside, but Grace disagreed, having their first tiff as a couple. From an alley, a hooded figure with reddish skin, short sleeves, and two axes on his belt caught sight of revealing mannequins and interesting items indicative of the Purple District's nature. He stopped in front of the Ember Leaf and recognized Pax as a candidate to the Meritronarchy. Choosing to stay and eavesdrop, he overheard Grace's fears about their trials and the potential pain of losing each other. The couple then left for the Chancellor's Palace, followed by the hooded figure. Meanwhile, Castiel prepared for his upcoming trial. He returned to the Witch's Grove, finding Emery's body missing, did some shopping, and spent time studying for ways to regain magical means. Disguising himself as a priest, he finally gained access to Saturni's temple. There, he chiseled his name in abyssal around the Sabbath water's spring, experiencing a spectral hand entering his body. He shared instructions with his makeshift family, the old man, the boy, and his hag daughter, performing a blood ritual to restore the old man's health enough to be able to walk away with the children. Adam, after leaving Tulrock at the prestige school, went home, overwhelmed by events. After meditating, he opted for a simple attire and contacted Elijah to help him in locating the person responsible for his father's death. As the clues, pointed to being near the orphanage. I need me some reveals on this here plotline. In Lover's Park, Kaith and Yarek discussed the time that had passed and Yarek's relentless search for her. That led to an argument, as Yarek felt that Kaith did not care as much for him. With his more romantic feelings unreciprocated, he simply walked away from their meeting. The raw emotion between them spoke of the depth of their past and the unresolved tension still lingering. Shaq reached the Chancellor's Manor, finding Castiel amidst the bloody ritual scene with a scroll. They interacted, getting to know each other better as Castiel's mad scientist tendencies continued to flare up. Pax and Grace arrived, and, in secret, Shaq shared his encounters with powerful creatures who had their own affairs, possibly following Obscuro. Kaith, sulking, retreated to her room, and Adam, taken aback by the bloody scene, spoke privately with Pax about the upcoming trial. Out of nowhere, on one of the manor's chairs, a tall, burly man appeared. His face was partially covered by his hood. He wore a big sword at his side and had a reddish, parched skin. Shaq attempted to tackle the figure, who evaded him effortlessly. Introducing himself as Axon Rue, the group decided to accept him into their party for the upcoming trial. These people. They see someone flexing, they invite him into the party. They did the same with Shaq. Uh, when will they learn? Pff, some reason. Ugh. Pax tasked Kate with an audit to inspect the capabilities and ways of both Axon Rue and Shaq, 
to observe if they could be trusted to take into battle for the final trial. At least there's that. Mm. For the next four days, Pax built an alliance with Lena and Prince Philip. Shaq prepared for Kate's audit. Adam brooded over people dating, and Ax and Rue requested a tour of Greenspring. Castiel crafted potions and taught Adam a new spell. Wither and bloom, foreshadowing, just saying. However, Castiel lost control when a strand similar to Sabbath water sprung from his arm, prompting him to seek Adam's help to dispel the magic. Kaith, meanwhile, audited Shaq and Axon and tried to reconnect with Yarek, who revealed Obscuro's role in his extended life. Another heated conversation ended unresolved yet again, with Kaith putting a stop to it that time. The War Council assembled, now allied parties against the final trial, and preparations were made for the dawn of Martis. The small prince was sent on a mission to check on one potential site of the battle, Hebdom's home. Good, go, be safe, little one. What's coming is no place for someone so adorable. Tension filled the empty streets, and, from the Gate of Solace, the skinny figure that once chased Shaq appeared. Their magic toyed with the party's minds. Shaq channeled a message, revealing the figure as Dionysie, a brother of Axon, who himself was, in truth, Gerasim, a draconic foe. Using his mental magic, Dio robbed the party of their enchanted items. Despite an attempt at making peace and compromise from Pax, combat ensued as Dio and Gerasim summoned powerful creatures and illusions. The party struggled against overwhelming odds. As the flames casted eerie shadows over the battlefield, the scene revealed the depth of the chaos. The sounds of clashing weapons and desperate cries filled the air contrasting with the serene dawn that was supposed to greet them. The storyteller appeared, watching the battle with an inscrutable expression. Adam leveraged his new spell to heal some of his allies while damaging foes, and Shaq, despite his wounds, fought with relentless vigor, his strikes imbued with desperation fueled by the stakes of their battle. Grace, maintaining her moonbeam spell, inflicted significant moon burning on Dionysie, who retaliated with brutal efficiency. The graceful gentleman and Lena, along with Pax, continued their assault on the dragon-like specter summoned by Dio, their coordinated efforts showcasing their combat prowess. The odds tipped in the villain's favor when a third brother, Zamfir, joined the fight and stole the Book of Vim from the Green Chapel. As the battle intensified, Kaith took steady aim at Gerasim, yet her arrows missed their mark amidst the chaos. Castiel, ever the strategist, catapulted a vial of Sabbath water at Zamfir, causing the book he held close to start peeling its cover. Adam, seeing an opportunity, cast another wall of fire, trapping Zamfir with its blazing confines and urging the party to retreat. Dionysia was finally taken down under the combined might thrown at him. Just when it seemed the tide might turn, Gerasim summoned another Balaur, which is to say, a big bad dragon in Vim parlance. Only, it was an illusion. But the retinue fell for it. Its fiery breath caused devastating damage to the group. Soon after, Shaq fell from the many cuts, his body lifeless amidst the flames. Castiel, with grim determination, retreated while withering and blooming vitality from enemies to his allies. The party's resolve was tested as they faced the ferocity of their enemies. Pax, despite his injuries, continued to fight with unwavering determination alongside the graceful gentleman and Lena, standing as pillars of strength. In a heart-wrenching moment, Mooney sacrificed himself to save Shaq, only to be consumed by the flames. Grace, with a heavy heart, casted healing words to bring Adam back to his senses but the toll of the battle was evident on her weary face, as she could not help Shaq. I'm not crying. You're crying. As the sun began to rise, the deadly battlefield became littered with the remnants of the fierce struggle. The dawn of Martis brought a somber light to the devastation, casting long shadows over the fallen, interrupted and flickered by the flames of spells. Shaq's burned body left the outcome of the battle hanging in the balance. 
the storyteller's gaze lingered on the scene, a silent witness to the unfolding saga. A sense of dread loomed over the group. The losses they'd suffered weighed heavily on their minds, each member grappling with the enormity of their situation. That might have been the first death of many soon to follow. Enough, enough, enough for one session. I'm not ready. For what's ahead, or oh, maybe I am, I don't know. How's this, dear audience? Let's take some time and check what follows next week, okay? Okay, thanks. Until next time, let's mourn. This was the recap for episode 18 of Vim as told by the Book of Recollections. I was Ruxandra Vorotnek, your Vim recap narrator. If you'd like to join us as Vim The Tale of Immortality premieres, tune in on Sunday at 5 p.m. UTC on youtube.com slash New recaps drop every Friday evening. And remember, every subscribe keeps the magic alive. Thanks for sticking with us. Good day, good night, and don't let the vampires bite.